We have one headline today from goodnewsnetwork.org that is very encouraging. As so many things from goodnewsnetwork.org are, gardening is booming during this pandemic and you can still start planting in July. Gardening businesses have been booming during the coronavirus lockdowns and nurseries have busily tried to keep up with the unexpected and unprecedented demand. Tending plants has always been one of the world's most popular hobbies, but no one was prepared for this surge in gardening, and nurseries are still propagating as fast as they can to keep up. The renowned seed company Burpee sold more seed packets this spring than at any time during its 144-year history, according to Reuters. Britain's Royal Horticultural Society has seen a five-fold rise in queries for gardening advice on its website during the lockdown. Even sales of houseplants are up as people look for ways to brighten their days in lockdown. People are taking time to reconnect with the earth, and an added bonus arrives for the climate every time a plant goes into the ground because it pulls out carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Now, I'm excited about this. Because it's not just a surge with a season or some trendy thing. This is obviously a bigger response to a bigger phenomena with coronavirus and the lockdowns. And there's a fear element to this, too. And it's not just, oh, people are locked out at home. They have more time at home and they're going to garden more and you're going to see uh, you know, the, the surge in, in gardening in general. A lot of this is around food production. And, it, and it's very rational in the drive for independence, for not depending on centralized systems that would be negatively impacted by another lockdown like the ones we're seeing now for the second wave of whatever we're experiencing at, at this point. And this goes along with a lot of other headlines that I've been covering from the perspective of, uh, you know, looking at the, the, these bigger trends, like people moving out of uh, cities into suburbs and rural areas or out of suburbs to rural areas, people looking to have food independence, people looking for general, you know, survival uh, lifestyle changes that, that, that make them more, I, I mean, it's kind of a trend in, in prepperism and it's, it's not just, uh, you know, preparation for, you know, what, what preppers consider or consider the, you know, breakdown of society, but it's based on what we're seeing as, as a real challenge right now. And I think there's, there, there this is the big opportunity for everybody to see, that you could be better prepared for this. You could have weathered this better. And, and for a lot of people, I, I mean, for me, owning 10 acres in the middle of nowhere where, you know, we are at least capable of full independence, you know, I think that's the most important thing. But for a lot of people, you know, hey, savings, having, having you know, a, a, a financial cushion of gold, silver, guns, ammo. And here I, I, I mentioned guns and ammo more than as a practical thing, as a, a, a liquid asset, but also obviously a survival thing. I don't think, you know, yeah, a security thing. I think that's a lower priority than the survival and cash element uh, of guns and ammo. And here, you know, just having an air gun to shoot rabbits if we have to to survive, you know, that's nice to have. Beyond that, owning your own land, not being a renter, not having to pay a mortgage, having some kind of food independence, you know, all of these things that people are more conscientious of now, at least that represents a general positive trend. And this just is like one of these underreported stories. You're not going to see the mainstream media go, hey, everybody's gardening, pay attention, here's the news. But this is... This is the bigger news of this crisis, that there is a positive shift happening underneath all the headlines. The article goes on, gardening in the summer, many people also think you cannot plant in the summer, which is simply not true. Uh, depending on the zone you live in, many vegetables and herbs can still be planted in July. From Brussels sprouts, my favorite, 
beets and broccoli in zones six to seven to corn and cucumbers, okra and onions in zones eight to ten. And so this is, you know, a really exciting time and it's happening, kind, you know, kind of at an opportune moment. I, I'm I, almost glad that the way this pandemic is unfolding, this pandemic, the Kung flu, that it it's coming with a lot of teachable moments without a lot of death. And, and I, I, I still see the tragedy that this represents in and of itself as a diversion of resources, as a forced unemployment crisis, as a consolidation of wealth and power. And it could be a lot worse. There's a teachable moment here, and it does look like people are learning and gardening as a result. Thank <laughs> you.